Now that we have completed the mapping of the body, we will now begin our journey through each of the body systems, of which there are 12. Our first journey begins with the integumentary system. This body system is divided into three major parts. The skin, the hair, and the nails. This system is known as a membrane because it covers the body and an organ because it contains several tissues. For the purposes of this course, the system will be described as an organ with a variety of essential tissues. The skin is composed by three main layers, epidermis, dermis, and hypodermis. The epidermis is the outermost layer of skin. This layer is further divided into five to six thinner layers which do not have blood vessels. Only two of these layers of the skin will be described. Stratum corneum. This is the uppermost layer of the skin which constantly sheds or where the dead skin cells are sloughed off. Essentially, the top layer of the skin is composed of dead cells. Stratum germinativum. The stratum germinativum is the lowest layer of the epidermis and is in contact with the dermis below. It is the layer in which cell division called mitosis takes place and where new epidermal tissue is formed and begins to migrate to the surface of the skin, replacing the dead skin cells found in the stratum corneum. Dermis, also known as the corium or the true skin. This layer contains major structures and functions for the skin within a framework of elastic connective tissue. This is where the skin comes to life. Contained within the dermis are the blood vessels, nerves, involuntary muscles, sweat glands, oil glands, hair follicles, and the papilla. blood vessels. Via the capillaries, nutrients are provided to the skin and waste products are taken away. These blood vessels also play a major part in maintaining and sustaining the body's temperature for optimal functioning. The vessels dilate to release heat or they constrict in order to retain the body's heat. Nerves allow the skin to have sensory perception. Through the skin, the body is able to respond to pain, pressure, temperature, as well as touch sensations. Involuntary muscles in the dermis control functions such as lifting hair or opening pores. By dilating or opening the pores in the skin, the body is able to cool off and allow sweat to exit. When the body needs to keep its temperature up to prevent heat loss, these muscles allow the pores in the skin to contract or constrict in order to keep the heat from exiting the body. In fact, if it's too cold, these pores can constrict so tightly that they form what is known as goosebumps. These structures are important for keeping and maintaining the body's temperature, which averages at 98.6 degrees. This helps maintain the process of homeostasis. Homeostasis is a major process by which the body works to keep all of its structures and functions in balance. Another way of saying it would be to keep the body healthy. Sweat glands, or sudoriferous glands, are coiled tubes that extend through the dermis and open on the surface of the skin at the pores. The sweat, or perspiration, eliminated by these glands contain water, salt, and some body wastes. Oil, or sebaceous glands, usually open onto hair follicles. These glands produce sebum, an oil that keeps the skin and hair from becoming dry. However, due to genetics, some people's hair is more dry than others. The dryness is determined by whether or not the hair is curly. 
the curlier the hair, the drier the hair, even when the amount of sebum produced is the same. A hair follicle anchors each hair into the skin, deep into the dermis. The hair bulb forms the base of the hair follicle. In the hair bulb, living cells divide and grow to build the hair shaft. The hair shaft is the hair that projects from the skin or scalp. Papilla. The top of the dermis is covered with papilla, which fits into the ridges right below the stratum germinavatum. The papilla are responsible for creating fingerprints and footprints. Like a snowflake, no one fingerprint is created twice, not even in twins. Subcutaneous fascia, or hypodermis. This structure is located below the dermis, or the bottom of the innermost layer of the skin. It is made of elastic and fibrous connective tissue and adipose, which is fatty tissue. The purpose for this layer is to connect the skin to the underlying muscles. Adipose, or fat, is the yellowish section found in this layer. We can compare our skin to a piece of cake. Epidermis is the frosting, the dermis is the cake itself, and the subcutaneous, or hypodermis, is the bottom of the cake connecting to the pan. Now, the hair is the second major part of the integumentary system. The hair's main function is to protect the skin. Hair is composed of a strong structural protein called keratin. The hair grows within a hollow tube called the follicle. Here's a little hair trivia for you. Hair can be shaved, cut, styled, and groomed. But why doesn't it hurt when you cut your hair? The answer is, it doesn't hurt when the hair is cut because there are no nerves. But then why does it hurt when you pluck your eyebrow or pull a hair out of the scalp? That's because at the base of the hair follicle are sensory nerve fibers that wrap around each hair bulb. All right, the third major part of the integumentary system is the nail. The nail's main function is to serve the fingers and toes as protective plates and enhance the sensation of the fingertip or the toe tip. Like the hair, the nail is also composed of keratin. Primarily, the nail is made up of dead epithelial cells packed tightly together to form a translucent, thick, dense surface of keratin. The nail is formed in the nail bed. If you slam your finger in the door, you may lose a nail, but it will regrow. If you damage the nail bed, however, that nail will never come back. Before we conclude part one of the integumentary system, let's review. There are three main parts to this body system, the skin, the hair, and the nails. And the skin has three main layers, the epidermis, which is the outermost layer, the dermis, which is just below the epidermis and contains major structures and functions for the skin within a framework of elastic connective tissue. And third, the subcutaneous fascia, or hypodermis, which is the innermost layer. Next, we covered the hair, whose main function is to protect the skin. And the third major part of the integumentary system is the nails, which serve the fingers and toes as protective plates and enhance the sensation of fingertip or toe tip. In our next video, we will be covering the functions of the integumentary system. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you again in part two.